Whether you're evaluating Asana for your team, migrating from another platform, or just feel like there are things you still don't understand about Asana, my goal with this video is to provide you with what I feel to be the most comprehensive overview of the basic features and functions of the Asana work management platform. But before we jump in, I do want to point out that I currently have two other Asana basic and advanced training videos that are still my highest performing videos month over month. Maybe you've seen them already and you're navigating to this new video, but I want to point out that the reason I'm recording this new video is because Asana has changed quite a bit since I recorded those earlier ones. The UI has changed, uh, there are new features, and I wanted to make sure that there was an updated video so that anyone looking at the tool today can understand exactly how Asana functions. And if you are new here, welcome. My name is Mark e. Murray, and I'm an Asana partner and the CEO of Surface, a process improvement consultancy. And I create videos every week on Asana and its various use cases to help you get the most out of the powerful platform. So make sure you're subscribed stay updated and get notified whenever a new video is released. Now let's get started. So before we get into the actual platform demo, I want to take you through just some of the theory behind how Asana works and how it's organized. And the first thing that Asana helps us to do is capture all of our work. This is the recording of all the work that needs to get done by me or by others. We do that through different tasks. We can assign those tasks to people. We can set different due dates. And so it's all captured in one place that everyone has access to. The next thing it allows us to do is organize all of our work. So all of the planning and the prioritizing of work in advance of actually executing it. When we come together, we meet virtually or in person. We have ideas, we're sharing, we're brainstorming, we're putting together project plans, campaigns, events, whatever it may be, we need to organize that somehow so that everyone is always on the same page and aligned around who is doing what and by when. And the third thing Asana allows us to do is track that work. So track the work that is being done, track all of the communications, track the status, track all the teammates that are working together in this one collaborative space. So think of this uh, as a, a real cycle of, you know, project planning where we're capturing our work, putting it in one place where we can then organize that work, and then we can track that work through various milestones, dashboards, reporting, whatever the case may be. And the reason why it's so important to understand this concept is because oftentimes what I'll see is we're coming from places where all of the capturing of the work is happening in notepads and sticky notes and in email and in Slack and in Teams. And the organization of that work is not happening, right? There is no central place where it's happening. There are rogue spreadsheets and Word documents and just things scattered everywhere. And quite often, the biggest complaint I'll get is how do we track everything? My leadership needs to see what the status of this campaign is. Is. My leadership needs to see what the workload and capacity of our team looks like, and we need support around those things. So we have to be able to track all of that. And so what we have typically is all of the, the documents and the work you know, that happens within a team. There's the file sharing, there's the storage of those files, and that all happens in one place. That could be in SharePoint, Dropbox, Google Drive, and it all happens kind of in a silo and you have to go and pick through all of the different folders and files to find what you're looking for. And then on the other side, there's all the communication that happens across various tools. Again, this could be Slack, Teams, email, WhatsApp for business, whatever the case may be, in person in a conference room or virtually over Zoom, right? All of that communication happens in different places. And so what Asana does is it actually bridges the gap. So we have Asana in the middle that bridges the gap between all the, all the documents and the files and then the various points of communication that are existing around the work that we need to produce. And so what Asana really does in the middle is it creates this clear plan to track the progression of your goals, your projects, and all of the different campaigns. And so for once and for all, it's bringing all of the work and the work about work and the communication about that work into one central place, giving you that central source of truth. And so one more stage I wanna take you through so you can understand the hierarchy and what you're actually looking at when you get into Asana. And I will break this all down for you once we switch over to the demo in a minute. And so you'll notice at the very top, we have what we, we call Phoenix Corp. This is just our demo space. And so this is your organization 
organization. So if you work at Google, this will be your, your organization. Everyone with a google.com email will have full access as a member or an admin, depending on your, your access levels that you're given, to the entire space. You will have access to all the public spaces within Asana, all the public projects, public goals, public dashboards, and you will have various um, abilities to create things, manipulate, projects and communicate again with your team within within Asana. When we go down a level, we move to our teams. I want you to think of teams as folders, folders that we can organize various projects and then the tasks within. So if you are a marketing agency, your teams could be the clients that you're managing and then all the projects you have ongoing for your, your clients within there. If you are working in a marketing department of a large corporation and you're responsible to internal clients, or internal stakeholders, then your teams could be uh, various departments. You could have the brand marketing team. You could have the legal team over here and all of their various projects. And so it already depends on what your structure looks like and how you want to organize that. Within, we have different projects. So you'll see here that the events team in this case, they have two projects. There is a company party that they're planning. So they are tracking, they are capturing, and they are organizing all of their work within that company party project. Then they have an events calendar project. You'll notice that the design team has their own space where they can manage all of their projects. And so again, teams are folders. That's how we'll be organizing them today. And I'll show you exactly what that looks like. When we drill down a level further, we have all of the tasks, subtasks, and comments. So again, a task is something that needs to be actioned by you or someone else. And in order for a task to be assigned properly, it needs to be assigned to an individual and it needs to have a due date on it. The third thing I, I would say is just a, a description of what you want them to carry out within that task. And so quite often I'll, I'll see task names where it says send visual to so-and-so, which visual, by when, where, where kind of format do they want it in, where will it be gathered from, who is needed to complete that task. And so the more description we can give, the better. And then we can always communicate um, through comments and various subtasks that relate to the parent task from which it originated. So just a quick overview here for you so you can understand what we'll be looking at when we get into the platform. So I'm going to switch over to our demo here for today. When you land in Asana for the first time, you'll see what is known as your home screen. Your home screen is your catch-all so that you can see an overview of everything that you really want to see. You can see the tasks that are assigned to you that are upcoming, what is overdue that you need to pay attention to, and then what tasks have been completed as well. Asana has a functionality where you can have forms for different intakes and requests and submissions, and you can have access to all those forms right here. We can also track our goals inside of Asana. So if you're in leadership and taking care of strategic planning, um, you can um, access those goals and input them for the entire company or a team or individuals. And then you can add in these different widgets. So if we did go to customize here, you can add in a status update widget or we can remove these widgets and put them back inside of our, our little widget container here. We can also change the, the background of our homepage and, and customize it just a little bit. So that is the homepage, just kind of gives us an overview of what we're looking at. A step further, we have our My Tasks section. So your My Tasks section is private to you, the owner, the user of that uh, Asana instance. And so this is where you will see all the tasks that either you assign to yourself or someone else has assigned to you. Regardless of the project that it's in or the team that it's in, you will see the full list of all of those tasks right here. Now, you're probably looking at this and thinking, that is so overwhelming. Why does it look like that? Uh, I could never work like this. And so this is what you might see when you first log on to Asana is something like this. And there'll be some getting started tasks for you. And it, it actually walks you through how to properly set this up. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you what that could look like today. So we're looking at the list view, as you can see right here. We also have an option to look at a board view where you can create different sections. So this is more like a Kanban style. And then we can also look at your different tasks on a calendar 
view as well. Now, again, back to this. If, if you feel this is too overwhelming, there are options for you. So we can sort by um, what we call sections inside of Asana. So we can sort by the due date of those tasks so it lines them up better for us. We can sort them by the different projects that we have going on. We can sort them by who um, created those tasks. And then we can sort by custom sections, which is my favorite feature of this and what I recommend all of my customers to use, where it takes all those tasks and it puts them into these accordion-like sections. So if you did want to create a section, you can simply add that section and you can call it whatever you want. And so in my personal space, not our demo space here, I actually have a section called tomorrow and you can slip and slide these sections anywhere you want and so what's nice is when you have a task that comes into your recently assigned section this is actually a default created by asana any task that's recently assigned to you that hasn't been triaged yet or or moved to one of the other sections automatically appears here now we can change the name of this of course we can do lots of things with this so what's nice is you can take this and if i did have a task for let's say tomorrow let's just update that tomorrow saturday i could simply move it into tomorrow and because it's not today i don't have to look at it so i can just close it up just like so and what's nice is in asana if you see this little lightning bolt we'll get to that a bit later you can create what are called rules and automations so you won't necessarily have to come in and move these tasks every day, we can create rules and automation that automatically promote those tasks to the section that you put it. So something like an upcoming you know, section, you can create a rule that says when the task is within seven days of being due, I want it to automatically move here. Or if we wanted to create a section and we wanted to call it overdue tasks, we can write a rule that says anytime that a task is one day overdue, move it to this section. And it, again, it keeps everything nice and organized again this is personal to you no one on your team is going to see this unless you give them access to it okay and i'm going to go to the next section so that's my task we will come back to that and how we can further customize it but we want to go to the the inbox section so think of the inbox as your notification center not to be confused with your your email inbox that's a whole other video that i'll record but as we get more comfortable with asana the goal for at least internal teams is to move away from internal emails as much as we can and rely on this tool i also say that we want to move away obviously from slack and teams and things like that so we can have all that coordination communication within the one platform so again anytime that a an action is taken on a task whether you're assigned to it or a field a custom field you've created is changed on a task that you are following you'll get that notification here if you're following a task or a collaborator on a task um, you'll get all those updates right here as tasks move through different stages, as projects are completed, as approvals are approved and rejected, as goals are updated, as status updates are provided, you'll see all that information here. And so what's nice is you can go through this and you can filter. You can filter to only show the notifications that are assigned to me, to, to you, or you know, assigned um, to a specific person, right? Anytime that you are mentioned, right? You have the ability to mention people where you can, you know, um, type in the at symbol and then, and then their name. And so if you only want to see those notifications, you can filter those views as well. And what's nice is as you're going through this, you have the ability to do a couple of things, okay? You can like that action that was taken, right? So this project was shared with me. I can go and I can click on this to see more details on what was shared with me. I can view that project, this task here, you know, it was unassigned from me and Asana is capturing all that information. So I can go through and I can like various things if there are comments, if there are actions taken, or I can archive them. So I would click on this task. I would take a look at it. Great, the task was completed. Everything looks good. I approve, great. Thanks for letting me know. Now we can archive this to get it out of our view, okay? But also if there's something that is you know important that we wanna get back to this project, for example, I don't have the time to view the project project right now, I'm just going to bookmark that project and then archive it. Okay. And what this does is it just sends it over to our bookmark section. So it gets it out of our main view, puts it in the bookmark section for us so we can come back to it later, but it's also in the archive section. And if there is something that you didn't want to archive, it doesn't really go anywhere. It just removes itself from the, the main view. So you can always unarchive something and move it back to the main inbox. So that's the basics on the inbox. Get used to looking at this. My recommendation is to have this open, um, you know, a few times a day, maybe once an hour you check it 
updates just to make sure that you're staying up to date with the work and the communications that are happening within your team. As many of you already know, I run a consulting company called Surface, which is a proud Asana partner. We specialize in a variety of Asana services, including training and workflow optimization. Whether you're in the process of introducing your team to Asana because you're transitioning over from another tool, or you're already using Asana but feel like you're not quite getting the most of its potential, we're here to help bridge that gap. Our training is tailored to fit your team's size, workflows, and skill levels so that you can get the most out of your Asana investment. Head over to surface.com for more information or book a connect call using the link in the description. Next, I'll go to the insights and I'm just going to show you what the insights are in this case. In another video, in a more advanced video, I'll be taking you on a deep dive through global or universal reporting, portfolios, and goals. But just so you can understand what you're looking at here is Asana gives you the ability to report on either project specific um, metrics and KPIs, or you can report on global metrics and KPIs. So you can look at the performance of different projects, multiple projects across different teams. So in different folders, you can look at uh, metrics and reporting around capacity for your team, workload for your team, and really see anything related to the tasks and the activity within your space. And I always say, if you're creating the proper structure for reporting, inputting all the data in the form of custom fields, if you're properly updating your, your projects and your tasks and communicating and moving tasks through the different sections as your projects advance, then you can report on it. You can do just about anything inside of Asana and get that data to be displayed in a visual way. You also have the ability to sort your different projects in portfolios. So similar to the teams, a portfolio is simply a folder. You can create a folder of many projects where you can have different fields where you can see the status of those projects, you can see the progress of those projects, you can see the due dates of those projects, the owners, and any other metrics you can think of, you can add them in here to report on it. Okay. You can also see a timeline of all the projects that you choose to add to this space. You can see a dashboard of all the metrics that are within these projects. You can see the high level workload across all of these projects and set capacity. You can do so much with this. And the third insight that I'll show you, again, I'm not diving deep into this basic video. That will be for another advance, but you can set your company goals here as well. And so here we have a company goal. We can add various either sub goals projects or tasks that help us to track kind of our progress as we get closer to achieving that goal. And so we can have an automatic update or a manual update of those goals. And so that's just a basic overview. Again, I will come back to that. But let's get into how we'll be using Asana day to day. So I've already showed you the my tasks and the inbox. Those are the main two things that will allow you to track and organize all of your work inside of Asana. But I'm gonna take you a step deeper and show you how you'll be collaborating with your team and others when using Asana. I'm gonna venture over to the Teams tab here and open it up for us. And so you'll see that you can simply click on this plus button to create a new team, or you can click this, this uh, red and black create button up in the top left to create a team as well. So we're gonna start by doing that and then walk you through how to structure everything. So in this case, I'm going to create a team and I'm simply going to call it marketing, right? So again, if you are in a, in a marketing department of a large organization, this is likely how you would structure your main marketing team. But again, this could be anything. This could be brand marketing. This could be your paid team. This could be your product team. It, it could be any number of things, but we'll just keep it really simple for today. You create your name for the team. You can add various members. And so anyone who you would be collaborating with, you can add them in here where they will be able to see the projects and all of the information within this team folder. All right. What's nice is you have this little endorsed checklist here, check button here, where you can click it on or off. And so as you can see, these are the recommended teams that, you know, anyone who is new to the company and onboarding can search through the different teams and browse them. And this would be one of those recommended you know, teams for them to join. In this case, I don't think we need everyone in the organization to be inside of marketing. That would be more for a public general company information or updates type team, but you do have the option there. And what it does is it puts a little verified badge beside it. And then there are various levels of privacy. So the privacy that I'm going to show you here, um, it extends 
through teams, it extends across projects, it extends to portfolios and various reports as well, where you can have it be visible and they have to request to have access to that space. Private, where they cannot see it, they can't even browse for it at all, and they cannot access the contents within unless they are invited by someone that is already a member of that team. Or you can have it be fully open and public to the organization. So make sure you check your settings here before creating these spaces and projects so that you make sure that access is given to only the people that need to have access. So in this case, I'm gonna have it public to the entire organization. Once it populates, you'll see that we have another space that we can then also customize. So now we can see all of our members here. When we eventually add projects to this, we will see them all listed here, okay? And then we'll have templates. So we won't review templates today. Maybe I'll give you a quick overview of what that looks like, but you do have the ability to make various templates if you're gonna be doing certain actions or campaigns or events or meetings over and over and over again. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by creating a new project. Okay, and again, we have access to templates. And if you are getting started with Asana, there are plenty of Asana curated templates to help you get started, right? Anything from cross team planning, ticket tracking, meeting agendas. Again, there are templates to help you get started and get more comfortable with the tool. The other option is if you're migrating from say spreadsheets or Smartsheet as an example, you can take CSV files that you're used to working in and you can import them here and Asana will guide you through a really simple configuration so that you can start you know, uh, adopting your workflow in the Asana platform um, and it will create all the different fields for you and help you map those things so you can get started really quickly. But in this case, I'm just gonna create a blank project for us. So I'm gonna call this, this could be brand launch 2024 there we go so as you can see it's in the marketing team but if i wanted to change it i could change it to whatever team i want but we are going to keep it in marketing and who do i want to see this do i want only the team to see it do i want everyone in the organization to see this project or do i want it to be private okay i'm going to have it as team only because I, I think it's only relevant to the marketing team in this case. And then we can pick a default view. Don't worry about this. You can change this at any time throughout the planning stage of your project, but I'm just gonna create a list view here and it's gonna pull up our default template to get started. Now I mentioned you can change the view at any time and simply, uh, we can do that simply by looking at the top here. So we have a list view, which we're looking at now. We can switch to a board view. Once we start populating our tasks and adding dates, we can switch to a timeline view. There's also the option to add a Gantt view if you would prefer that. We can look at a calendar view. Uh, we can look at our onboard dashboards here of all the, the key metrics within our platform and just do so many different things. And so let's go back to our, our list here for a second and just again, go through the basics. So Asana does a great job of kind of prompting you on where to go. If this is your first time creating a project, it'll guide you through how to create your first tasks and sections. But when in doubt, just look around. So here we have a button to add a task. So this will be task one, task two, and I just pressed enter. So like a Word doc, you can just press enter, task three to create a new task, okay? And we can also add assignees. So I'm gonna assign this to myself and I'm gonna have it be due tomorrow. This task will be assigned to someone else and it'll be due on Monday. And then Happy Gilmore is gonna get a task assigned to them on Wednesday, like so. So that is really the basics of project planning right? It's really simple to get started. We can have these tasks, we can assign them to someone else. And as long as there's a due date around it, we consider that task to be completed. Now, again, there's lots more that we can investigate here. Before we get to the, the details of the project, though, we want to talk about organizing our tasks within the project. So again, if this was a brand launch, maybe we wanted to have a planning stage. So I'm gonna add a section for that. Click on section and I'm just gonna call this planning. Maybe we have another section, we can call it design and then we can have review and then approved and then maybe legal has to review it with legal and then we can have one that says done, right? So now we've created all these different sections. Again, you can customize them and change them whenever you want. But if I were to select shift click, I can then highlight multiple tasks and we can highlight up to 50 tasks at a time and then move them to the, the section of our choosing. Another option, instead of clicking and dragging, if you kind of hover over right here, you'll see these, uh, these arrows. You can then choose the section that you want to reassign it to and move them through really quickly. All right. So now we've just organized our, our tasks a little bit. 
all right? But if we want to take it a step further, as far as organization goes, if we're thinking kind of long-term here from a re reporting perspective, we can add what are called custom fields. So by default, we have the assignee field here, we have the due date field, okay? But we can add various custom fields as well. So up in the top right corner, okay, you'll see this customize button. I always say this is where all of the magic, all the customization happens around what you can do inside of your projects, whether you're adding a custom field, which we're going to do in a minute here, creating a rule or automation. You can do all that here, whether you're adding apps that you can integrate with, right? Whether it's uh, Teams or Slack or Gmail, you can integrate those apps here. You can create your forms. You can create task templates that you can use over and over again, um, create different sections. And if you were on the enterprise plan, you can create what are called bundles, which will be for an advanced video. But again, we're going to go in, create a custom field. So when we click on fields, I'm going to add a field and I'm just going to call this field um, progress for now. Okay. You'll notice that there is a library. And so if you click over to the library, you can search through all of the custom fields that already exist in your space. So I'm actually going to start there just to see what we have for progress. And as we can see, Asana has given us some fields that they have created and they've suggested for us to choose from. So let's just see what Asana is suggesting for us. I've clicked on task progress and then it gives us some options here. Great. So simply we have a, a not started, we have in progress, waiting, deferred, and done. But if we did want to add other options or just simplify it a little bit, we can go back to add field. And now I'm just going to progress two because we know that there is another progress already. And then we have different options. We can create a single select where you can select one option at a time, a multi select where you can add different variables and, and select many of them at a time, date field, a people field a text field, which can be used to um, put just general information in, or if you have a, a URL, you can put it in here and it turns it into a hyperlink. Uh, you can add numbers, which are in this case, um, percentages or dollars or various currencies that you can modify. You can add prefixes and suffixes. You can create basic and advanced formula fields as well to do calculations within Asana. And then you can create ID tasks, which adds a prefix to any of the tasks within Asana that you know, you would, would create for it. So lots of options here, but again, we're just going to create a, a simple single select. And the first option is going to be to do the next one will be in progress. And then this will be done. And I'm actually going to change the colors just so it makes a bit more sense. So maybe to do is red and then in progress is I don't know blue, something like that. At this point, we have a couple options. We can add it to the library. If this is a field that we know that we're going to be using time and time again across multiple projects, maybe there are other people in our organization or department that would also use this field. So we want to make it available for them. Okay. We can have it so that people are notified anytime that these, the status changes or the progress changes as well. And they'll get a, a notification where that's right, in their inbox. Um, and then you can have one more customization here where only the creator of that field can modify the options within that field. Now, depending on what it is, you may want to do this if there are certain things that leadership doesn't want to be modified and only a small handful of people should have access to that, then maybe you want to select it. But as projects evolve, as processes evolve, I think we want to have or give people the ability to make changes on the fly. So for right now, I'm not going to add it to our library. Okay. And and I'm going to actually put on uh, notifications there. So let's create that field. And so now as we're going through, we can do a couple things. We can say that this task that's in review is in progress. Maybe task two is still in planning. Let's move that back up there. And that is to do. And then we have task three here that is done, right? So we can simply do something like that. And so now we can see high level. Let's remove the original field. We can see high level what's going on. And what's great now is rather than just having these sections for planning, design, review, approve, legal, done. Now we can sort by the actual progress itself. Okay, so we can sort all of the tasks. If they were scattered about the place, we can see them all and where they stand. We can also then filter are our different tasks. I'm going to remove that sort for a second. We can also filter these tasks. So if we wanted to see only the tasks that were in progress, we could select the custom field we just created from the filter dropdown, and then we would select the in progress. 
like so. So now we can see only the tasks that are in progress. And what's nice about this is if you notice throughout the video, there's this uh, little button up here that says save view. All right, I'm gonna talk about that here really quick. And so what save view allows you to do is if we wanted this to be the main view, where everyone would come in and see only the in progress tasks, we could save that view. Now everyone would come in and see that task. Okay, we also have the ability now to rename this. So we can call this in progress like so. So everyone knows that this is in progress and we only know that because this filter is applied. But we can also do a few other things. So we can go back here and if we wanted to see all of the tasks that were now done, right, we wouldn't save the view again because it would overwrite the in progress um, save that we just made. But what you can do now is you can save a new view into a new tab. So I'm going to save this as a new tab. And as you can see, it just created another version of this. I'm going to rename this and I'm going to call it done. And then I'm going to move it all the way over here. So now we have our in progress tasks and we have our done tasks. Okay. If you wanted to create another view, we can create views just like that with um, boards, timelines, and that's how we get these other options here. So now we can see the tasks on a timeline. We can see them on a calendar. We're looking at the week view in this case. I'm going to switch to the month view. We can see the tasks on, on the month view. And then if we really wanted to, we could then go and create a chart in our dashboard. So I'm going to show you really quickly. And here we have it. It's given us a column in this case, okay? It's sorting on the X axis by the custom field progress to, and it's showing us how many tasks we have. If we wanted to get a bit deeper, we could add uh, a date field that would show the tasks only that are due within the next two weeks, two months, and so on. Or, you know, within the last two months. And obviously there are no tasks within the last two months because we just created this project. And so you can get really detailed. You can change the view of this as well if you want to. And then it adds this really nice chart here as well. So that's what that looks like. All right. There's one tab that I haven't shown you yet, and it's called the overview tab. And so this is the hub of every single project. Right. What you'll see here is that we have a project description where we can put in the purpose of the project like so. So as we know, this is a, a brand launch for 2024. We're planning for this launch. We're working towards it. We can see the different roles and people that we have on the team and we can add in other members that will work with us here as well. So just because they're on the, the team in, within the team folder, it doesn't mean that they're a member of the project. And so if if you want them to come into the project, let's say if we had chosen to make this project private, we then need to add these people in or else they will not have visibility. So I'm going to add in folks that I had originally added to my team and I want to notify them anytime that tasks are added to this project. If you don't want to do that, then you can unselect that because if you're getting started with the tool, not comfortable with the inbox yet, it can be overwhelming to get a bunch of notifications. And so you can switch that on and off and I'll actually show you something a bit later where you can do that globally. All right. So let's just keep that on for right now. Another way that you can add team members at any time in any view that you're in is to go up here to this share button right there, click share, and you can do the same thing. You can add team members. All right. Within this space, if we were doing our strategic planning within Asana and we added goals to this, we could then connect this project to the goals. So I mentioned we can have sub goals and we can measure the progress of those goals by adding a metric where we either say the task completion is what gets us closer to our goal or whether it's milestones completed that gets us to our goal. And so we can, um, complete those goals by adding relevant projects. Again, portfolios, which we briefly touched on. Um, you can see which portfolios these projects are in. We can add key resources, things like project briefs or project overviews within Asana as well. By simply clicking and dragging, you can add notes here. You can have your executive summary. You can pull in your problem statement and then you can post this and then everyone on the project can come in and see all the relevant details around the project. And I'm only pointing this out because a lot of times what we'll see is you'll have a section and we'll call it resources. We don't have to do that, right? So then this would be Google link to something. I don't know. 
right? We have this overview section. We can have our brief here, and then we can add various uh, files and links from our computer, our shared spaces, and they're all linked right here for us. And so, and then we can see all the milestones within the project as well. So I'm gonna switch back over to our list view, our in progress view in a minute here, and I'm gonna show you some different ways you can customize your project, um, your tasks, and then look at the task details as well. One last thing I want to show you here in the overview tab that's very, very important to tracking our work, right? So we talked about the planning, we talked about the organizing, the tracking of the work, and that's through status updates. At the project level or the portfolio level, once we get there, you have the ability to track your the status of the project and report on it. So in this case, you'll see that I am the project owner, but I could set someone else as the project owner, and that would likely be the project manager, right? So at a frequency that you determine Determine, but you know, at a minimum, we do this once a week. The project owner would be responsible then for updating the status of the project. So here we have three options, okay? On track, at risk, or off track. And so let's just assume we're doing great. Everything's awesome. We are going to say that we are on track. And actually, I'm gonna go back for a second to in progress. And I'm going to go to, I'm gonna remove this filter right here. And I'm gonna save a new tab. And I'm gonna call it all tasks like so. All right, so let's just say this one is done. I'm gonna click on the little, you know, circle right here, the, the check mark, and I'm gonna say that it's done. All right, so then we will go back over to our overview and I'm gonna go on track. So here's where we can add a, a custom title, for whatever we want the status update to be called. We can add in different fields if we added them to our portfolio and we can create a summary now of the update. This can be any information that you want to provide your team, right? We can also add our next steps. You can add in, you know, what's blocked, like so, or what's been completed. You can really do anything you want. And then again, you can slip and slide these anywhere you want to. So now what's nice is Asana gives you what are called highlights when it comes to status updates. So because we completed one task in our project, okay, we now have the ability to view all of the completed, overdue, or upcoming tasks within a two week, three week, four week time frame. And what I'm gonna do now is simply click and drag this over and it will give me the list of the task, the due date of the task and the assignee of that task. So it's showing me that it's completed, all right? Now we can see all of the upcoming tasks that have not been completed. So in the next steps section, we could then communicate our next steps but then I can also click and drag this over here. And we can do the same thing for any milestones that are in our, our projects or any approval level tasks that are in our project. And then we can get these little just line graphs or, or bar charts here that just give us more information. So this can be incomplete tasks by assignee, completed tasks by assignee, or incomplete tasks by section. So let's say, if we um, had some incomplete tasks by section, these ones we're gonna say that they're blocked right now because they're not completed or they're blocking. And then we can get a really nice report here. We can then, again, as the owner, remind ourselves every Friday to update the progress of this. And what will happen is the Thursday before the status update is needed, you'll get a task inside of your My Tasks to remind you to update the status of your project. And it will give you a little hyperlink as well. To click on that project, it will bring you to the status update so you can update it quickly for your team as well. You can then add different people that you want to make sure receive this, okay? By default, any members on the team will, will automatically receive this status update as well. And then we can simply post that status update. And so you'll notice we have this status update here now. You can see that we just did it. And if I were to go and update this, you know, at another time, let's say we're at risk, like so, you will then see that the next status update was at risk. And we can see that full history here. So the overview section is very powerful, it gives you all the information that you'll need. I may be a bit biased in saying so, but if you haven't already done it, I highly recommend subscribing to our newsletter, All Systems Go. Each week we deliver the latest news, blog posts, and even free resources on Asana and workflow optimization directly to your inbox. The best part, it's totally free. It's the perfect resource you're looking for to improve your system building skills and productivity through process improvements. All Systems Go is designed to be your go-to guide in navigating workflow optimization, especially if you're new to it. Click the link below to subscribe. Let's get back to our, our list view here with our all tasks. I'm gonna walk you through the project details so you understand what you're looking at and what you can do 
within a task as well. So here you can see we have the assignee. First thing we're looking at at the top here. Then we have the due date. So we can change the assignee to anyone that we want. We can change the due dates. We can set um, durations of those tasks as well so that they span over a certain amount of time like so. If we switch to the timeline view, we can change them really quickly. We can move these around. There's lots of different ways to customize this as well. And we can also get a view of the project details from the timeline, the Kanban board, or the calendar. We're looking at the same task in a different view. All right, and then we have the ability to add this task, multiple projects, and that feature is called multi-homing. So you have one task, one instance of the task with all of the details, all the descriptions we're gonna add in in a minute, all the comments, all the communication around that task, but it, you can have that same task exist in two spaces, okay? And so in this case, I'm gonna have this task two visible in both the brand launch team, okay? Here it is, let's go to our all tasks, okay? We can have it visible in this project, but then if we go into the task detail, we can also have this same task visible inside of our custom rule builder. Okay, custom rule builder project. So this is just another project with visibility for different teams. And so if we go back to our brand launch here, uh, we can see that it's in the planning stage or the planning section right here. But then in the custom rule builder demo section, it's in the untitled section right there. So if we did have another team working inside of that project, they could essentially have completely different sections and stages that their task is being moved through while the same task is being moved through different sections in another project. Multi-homing can be very powerful because there may be multiple people in different departments. This is where the cross-functional collaboration really comes in handy because you can see the same task, all the information is in one central place, but multiple people are seeing it and using it for different purposes. The next thing you can do is add different dependencies. So you can either add a dependency to another task where the completion of this task is blocked by the completion of another task, or you can have this task be the blocker for another task being able to be completed. So let's take a look at this here. If we wanted to, we could say that the completion of this task is being blocked by the completion of this task one. So I can simply go in here and I can search for my task or add in the URL to that task by clicking on the, the copy task link up here, okay? Or I can just see it right here because I'm in the same project. So now you'll notice what is gonna happen in a second here. So I'm gonna copy this, this task link and I'm gonna add that dependency. I'm gonna put it right in there. There we go, it's the same version of the task. And so now it is blocked by this task, all right? So you can see our Asana is syncing here, all right? So Asana just needs to be reloaded there real quickly. So now you'll see that what it's done is it's added this hourglass and it says that it's waiting on one task to be completed, okay? If we try and complete it, it will not let us complete said task. Okay, until task one is completed. Now just pay attention right there for one minute when we mark this task complete, that is blocking task number two, mark complete, and then it will unblock this one. So now we can go in and we can complete said task. And as you can see, Marky Murray completed the blocking task, task one, and then Marky Murray would get a notification in Marky Murray's inbox, that's right, that this task is now unblocked and they can start working on it. Okay, so there we go. That's the real nice thing about dependencies. All right, so let's keep on going down here. You can add um, different fields. And as you can see, these are all the, the fields that we have assigned within this project. I'm gonna remove that multi-home for a second and um, just focus on the fields that we have in this project. And that's something that I should point out actually, is when you multi-home the same task to another project, you inherit all of the, the custom fields that that other project has. So that's another thing that improves the, the communication and the clarity around the tasks in various projects across teams. Because if the, the team that is using the custom rule builder project has an approval status that information is needed, we know that this you know, task is potentially blocked because they're gathering information. But then my team on the brand channel can also see that this is a company brand channel. We can see the content type in this case is going to be um, an ebook or white paper. That's the main deliverable for this, this brand launch. Maybe we need to communicate it to stakeholders. And then there's another task status in the other side. So be mindful that when you multi-home, you do inherit the fields of the other 
projects. All right, so I'm gonna remove those again just for a second so we can focus on what we have here. All right, and so we have our in progress field here. These ones stayed because we, we removed the multi-home. If I were to add it back, I can then remove those items and then it would it would go away. But in this case, that's just how multi-homing works when it comes to fields. So let's add in a description. So task two could be um, information for the assignee to complete so they can do the task to the best of their ability. So the more detail you can put in here, the better, right? We can, uh, like I said, we can mention people in this as well. We can also mention tasks in here. So if we wanted to mention task one in this um, same project, we could, we could do so, so that we're adding context to this task as well. We can add various images to this. Uh, we can add in tables where we can have uh, a section header. We can add um, person like so, and then we can add in other columns or other rows as well to you know display information in different ways. What's nice as well is if you were to add in something like a Figma link or something from Miro, you're gonna get that live view of that document in the description as well. So a very powerful space where you can do a lot of things, but just take a look through here because you can add in different videos, charts, different designs, and other media to this as well. Lots of formatting you can do there as well. You can also add different subtasks into Asana. So I mentioned at the beginning of this video that that's another way that we can add kind of action items that relate to the parent task from which it originated. And so you have this parent task. So this could be plan ebook. Let's just change the name of this for a second. We have a plan ebook, and then this subtask could be book planning meeting right? It relates to the ebook. So I'll just say for ebook. We can say verify design requirements for ebook, right? We can do things like that. And then like the, the parent task, if we drill down into them, we can assign these to other people and then we can add due dates for those. And if we look at those on the timeline, it'll show up like this. So now we have the, the duration. We can see the dependency that we have drawn to the other task. If we click on this little arrow right here, we can then see the subtasks that I've added here as well. It's asking me to view unscheduled tasks because there was another subtask that I didn't assign yet. So let's just do that one really quickly like so. And there we go. Now we can see both subtasks, their assignees, and the due date for those subtasks as well. So lots of information there. The recommendation is to, if you can get away with it, don't go down too deep. I would say one, maybe two levels of subtasks is the most that I would go because what starts to happen is this. At the top level, in the parent task, we can see that we have two subtasks. All right, we can now open up this accordion and see those subtasks there. But if we go into one of the subtasks and add sub subtask right here, I'll go back up to the top, we can now see that there is another subtask, but we can't open it up. So the visibility is then minimized. And so we'd recommend for things not to get lost or people to kind of get turned around to just keep it to the parent task and the subtask and provide as much information in the description as you possibly can. And then we have the activity section. So we can view either just the comments and the threads on this task, or we can have all activity. So all activity would be everything that's happened. So as we've been going through this demo, I've been making various changes. So we created this 29 minutes ago. Great, we're doing okay for time, I think. And we can see all the changes that have happened. So when I change the description, when I removed custom fields, when I changed dates, when I marked a task that was blocking is incomplete, we can see all of those things. When I moved a task from one section to another, we're getting all this activity. So if someone, you know, maybe deletes something from the description or changes a field and you can't remember what stage it was in, you can always check the activity and go back to what um, was there before. So if I were to go like this, I'm gonna delete that from the section and then it's gonna say marquee deleted. So that is our activity section, or we can just filter for the comments if all that information is too much for us. And then, like I said, we can collaborate with other people. We can share messages, or sorry, I should say comments here. This looks great. Thanks so much. And then we can say things like, can we change this? right, whatever it may be. Now, obviously that's not best practice. If we need someone to action something, we wanna create a subtask for them to say, can we change 
this and then go to the details of that task and tell them exactly what we want to be changed. All right, but we can go back and forth here. We can paste links and we can do all of those sorts of things. So one last thing that I'll show you in the task detail is collaborators, all right? So as you can see, we have the option here to leave the task. Now, the only time you would want to do this is if you're getting notifications in your Asana inbox um, that you don't need to be receiving, right? So you don't need to get everything. If it's not relevant to you anymore or you're not on that project, you don't need to see it, then you can um, simply leave that task and it will remove you as a collaborator. Okay, collaborators by default will receive all notifications. So again, we when we created this progress to custom field, we asked that any time that the progress to was changed, that the collaborators would be notified. So all these three people just got a notification that I changed this from to do to in progress, right? So those are the kinds of things that, you know, may clog up your inbox and feel overwhelming if you are just getting started with the tool. And so you can always leave them, okay? Or you can add other people to this as well if you want them to be notified or informed about what's happening within this task. All right. And so one last thing I'll show you in the project about communication before moving to our some of our settings here is the messages. So I showed you that you can communicate through comments within a task or you can you know do a status update to communicate on the overall status of the project. But you can also look at messages and communicate to everyone within the space as well. And so because we've completed our status updates, the status updates reflect as messages within that project. And so you can see our first status update here where we're on track, then we can see our second status update. But if we wanted to communicate just a general message that wasn't specific to any task, we could do so at the project level. So general message, this could be a great job team or FYI, the client is asking for a meeting on to 2028, right? So it could be things like that. Again, we can share links, we can share images here, we can share whatever we want. We can at mention people like so, and then we can reference, you know, various tasks um, and information, and then we can send it to the folks on our team, okay? And that will show up as a general message. So that is basic overview of the entire project space, right? We can then go into the project details. We can make changes, you know, to the due date, to the duration of that project as well, because that's how it will be displayed in both the overview section and the portfolio section when we start using it. We can set our permissions and change who has access to what here, whereas project admins can do certain things versus editors or members can only do certain things. We can copy the project link, duplicate this project, use it again, save this as a custom template if we want to use something like this over and over again. Let's say we've created all the rules and all of the different sections. We can do all of those things and then we can add it to a portfolio. So lots of things to explore here. And one last thing I want to show you in the project I almost forgot is I'm just going to show you a quick basic rule building. Okay, and so as you are moving your tasks through, as you can see, we've got lots of sections here. Like if I were to move task one to the approved section and let's just go and edit this to add another variable. I don't want to have to move it here and then go to click on approved, right? I want that to update automatically. So you can do one of two things. You can either click on the three dots of the section where you want the rule to apply to, or you can go to our customized section. Okay, I'm going to show you the customized section because I like that that way better. So you're going to go here and then you're going to click on rules and you're going to add a rule now. So you can create a custom rule, okay? Or you can look through the various rules that are already built for you. And so at the top, these are recommended fields where if a task is added to a project, you wanna add certain collaborators automatically. If a task is added to a project, we wanna move it to a section. If a task is added to the project, we wanna add it to an additional project. So we wanna multi-home a task automatically every time it's added to a project. But in this case, I'm just gonna create my own custom rule. And so with everything, there is there's a trigger and there's an action. There's something that has to happen so that another thing can happen. And so the trigger in this case is when a task is moved to a section, I'm going to choose the task approved. What do I want to happen? The action that I want to have happen is simply that I want to change progress to approved. All right, that's my rule. That's it. I'm going to create that rule and I'm going to have this task 
be moved here, you'll notice that we've got a little lightning bolt there now. I'm going to move this task to the approved section. It's going to go from in progress to approved in three, two, there it is. All right, perfect. So that's one way you can use it. That's a very basic rule. You can stack these. You can do so many other things. I'm going to go and create one more rule for us as well. And when I say you can, you can stack these rules, when you go into the custom rule builder, I'm not going to do it for you right now, but there is an option where you can have a more advanced custom rule builder and so you can update to the new rule builder and you can add in branching um, check if logic when this happens if this happens you can do so many things here okay but i'm just going to keep this video really simple for you and the next action i'm going to have here is that when a task is completed so the trigger in this case is when so when a task is completed this has been a long video but we're okay we're almost done um, when a task is completed we want to do two things we want to move it to a section called done but then we also want to do what we want to change the custom field progress to done as well all right so we're going to create that rule and you're going to see what's going to happen with task one so we're going to complete that it's going to move it automatically to this section like so and it's changed the progress there for us. So it's not exactly what we want. In my next video, I will go over some more advanced rules, okay, for us so we can get, have a little bit more fun with it. But that's what I'm going to show you and focus on for today. One quick thing before we get to some settings, some basic settings for you is if any of this was, you know, overwhelming or, or too fast, obviously my team at Surface is happy to help perform trainings like this. We do open office hours, we do curriculum based training on our basics and advanced and also what we call executive visibility, which focuses on goals and reporting. So there's a link in the description. Feel free to book a call with us to find out how we can help you and your team get up to speed on the platform. For. But if you're in the tool, you can always click on help in the sidebar here and there's lots of helpful content. There's quick little videos here that Asana's put together. There's different topics you can explore and contact support from here. You can look at all the onboard shortcuts that Asana has and there are some really cool ones. So you should get familiar with that and you can learn more about apps and integrations. Okay, so you can always search here, look around for what you are, are struggling with or again, reach out to, to me and my team. So the last thing I'll show you for this video today is the settings. So when you click on the, the top right, your little avatar here, you're gonna go and click on your settings. This is where you can customize your profile. Um, you can set your out of office inside of Asana as well. You can update your, your general settings. So if you want to enable keyboard shortcuts or have a timer on the app, um, enable the Asana app icon, you can change your notifications. And so I, I mentioned that oftentimes you'll get kind of overwhelmed with notifications. If you are starting out by default, Asana is going to do a couple things, right? They're going to send you emails every single time something happens in Asana to get you used to understanding that work happens in Asana and then it will redirect you to Asana. So you're going to get a notification about that in your email. As you get more comfortable, I'd recommend just coming in and turning off those emails, turning off those daily and weekly summaries because they can become overwhelming. Okay. And then if someone, your team lead or your project manager added you to a project and you're now getting all of the activity updates on that project and they're not relevant to you, you can simply turn them off. So if you don't want status updates, if you don't want messages, and if you don't want to be notified every time a task is added, you can simply turn that off as well. Or we can go in and manage the settings on individual projects. And so you can come in and you can turn off or on status updates, messages, and tasks added for select projects so you can clear out the noise and clutter, all right? Under email forwarding, Asana allows you to take your emails and put them into Asana and send them in as tasks. And so as long as you're signed into your domain, so again, if we're at Google and you have a google.com, email address and that's the one you're using to sign into Asana. Any email that you forward to x at mail.asana.com will come into your my tasks as a task in Asana. The subject line is going to be the task name. Body of the email will show up in the description. The um, collaborators, as long as they're in your Asana space or people that are CC'd, sorry, in the email will be collaborators in the task and any attachments inside of the email will then be uh, files or attachments within your Asana task as well. So lots of great options to help you migrate from internal emails and put the work where the work needs to be happening. There are various account settings here as well, um, where you can add uh, free workspaces for your team. You can change the display, the theme if you prefer dark mode. When does the day of the week start? You can change how Asana looks. So if you can see on the left, I'm changing right there. I like to show the task numbers as rows right there. And then you can change the background of your Asana 
as well if you want to. Then we can take a look at the different apps that you have connected to this space as well. If you have developers on your team or any engineers and you do want to connect apps or connect to the API, you can do so by managing all your different developer apps here as well. And then there are various hacks, as Sona calls it. So this one isn't going to be turned on by default. I'd recommend going and turning on extra delight. Okay, I'll show you why in a second. Um, you will need to reload on your Asana to do so. And then you can change your notification settings and how recurring tasks show up. All right. So with your extra delight, you'll notice when, like if I were to right click on this one and change this to a milestone, for example, and I complete that milestone, you get those little characters that fly across the screen. Okay. So Asana is really fun like that. If I were to change this to an approval task and this task is now approved. Oh, it's done now. So, you know, it's going to move to our done section. So there's lots of stuff we can do there, but if you were to press tab B in your cat person, then all these random cats will pop up on the screen. Some people like that. Um, tab V, if you're a dog person like I am, then you can take a quick break from your day and uh, enjoy some furry uh, dogs there as well. So lots of cool things you can do inside of Asana, but thank you for watching. This was an overview of the basic features and functions of Asana. I really hope you found this helpful. Uh, let me know what you thought in the comments. If you have any other questions about it, I'm happy to always answer them. And again, if you do need support with your team, feel free to reach out at the link in the description or visit surface.com for more. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.